So for many people who watch our videos and other items, they feel that they sometimes know who we are and what we're all about. But one of the things that some people don't know about me is that I have a very, very bad problem with anxiety. And it's affected me for a number of years from childhood until today. And go back to 2012, it was particularly bad. And the one thing which consoled me and gave me comfort was my faith. So, um, on occasion when I found myself in a bad state of anxiety or um, worry, I would go to Carfin Grotto and reflect on the peace and tranquility of its location. So, why am I telling you this today? Well, because at one of those visits, I came across this diary from a boy called Joe Wilson who died in 2011 and he was local and he was from Carfin. And this diary touched me in many ways and also comforted me in times of anxiety. So, to this end, we're delighted to say that we asked um, Joe's dad, Alan, to come in here today and we are delighted that you've accepted to come in and chat a bit more about the background to this diary and how it came about. Welcome to the Church Chat Studio in Holy Family Moss End. Mm -hmm. And once again, thanks for coming in. So can you maybe give us a wee bit of background to how this diary came about, how I came to find it in Carfin? Yeah, no problem at all, John. First of all, what a great testimony from you. I mean, that's, that's very touching. And <clears throat> the fact that Joe's words has helped you is exactly the intention. Um, but to, to, to bring you back, I mean, obviously it was a, a horrible, hor horrible tragedy when Joe died. Uh, Beautiful young man. Um, he's uh, not only was he superbly intelligent, uh, he'd, he'd applied for medicine, but he was also a really, really caring um, guy as well. He was the kind of guy that when you spoke with him, uh, you just felt so special. He could find something in every person to have a wee chat about and just uplift them. He's a big loss. Oh yeah, and what I find interesting is that I'm coming this from two times. I've found the book in 2012, and now I found it again. I'll tell you how I found it again. It's quite an interesting story in some kind of ways, but um, for me in 2012 as well, um, I was at university, and I was still a practicing Catholic. I always have been a practicing Catholic, but my friends had fallen away from the faith. Um, still friends with them, but <laughs> they're, they're lapsed Catholics. Um, and at that point in time, you're thinking, you feel a bit isolated, and I think that might be the experience for some people. Um, but reading, reading some of the words in here is a bittersweet kind of thing, because you think, well, here's someone who's very local, around about my age, he was born in 94, was it, he was born? 94, December 94. Yeah, so I was born in 1990, so you're thinking, well, this is someone that really got it, this is someone who was living their faith and believed it and was writing these heartfelt things, and then, yeah, he's gone, you know, from this earth. But something about it uplifted me in my own faith journey. I think, well, this was believed by someone. And it really inspired me on to continue. But now we're looking at, we're now in 2019. And whatever's happened in my life, um, suddenly I'm working for the church, promoting the gospel and doing that now. And I kept the book in, I kept the book in my room. I uh, kept it, but I actually hadn't um, know where it went. I thought I'd lost it. It was gone. And... Uh, just out of the blue, I saw the Catholic Observer article two weeks ago um, about your your trip to Ben Nevis. Um, and I thought, oh, I remind you, remind you of that book. I thought, oh, I remember that book. We're good to find that again. And that was it. But then, a year or two later, I was looking for another book in my bookcase. I've got tons and tons of books. So so it's, it's kind of things can get buried. And I pulled out a Celtic book. Because um, I was looking up, Bill McNeil had died and things. I was looking up a kind of captain. Um, the history of the captains, and out fell the book. I thought, hmm, <laughs> strange how that works. So I thought, I felt complied, you know. Well, there's a wee bit to add to that, because actually, if you, I mean, you recounted that story with me before, and, and there's a hundred stories that I could tell you of, of similar, some people call them coincidences, no, there's, there's, there's a bit more to it than that. But you'd actually contacted me just before to say, would you be interested? And you know, can we have a chat? And you know, I came along, had a wee meeting, 
and it was in the I think it was after we'd the meeting just after that the you know you found the book again yeah. so that that uh, I, I mean obviously I have doubts and say, should I do this should I not mm. but uh, that affirmed to me yeah go ahead and do this well I uh, um, because talking about the book itself I think this is something that does people do not see yeah. there's a speaking as a young Catholic I think there is a kind of Nowadays it's hard to be a young Catholic. I think sometimes when you generally have faith, people mock it. And I think sometimes as well when you're trying to follow, as Joe says in his book, he's talking about the, um, following God's rules and following the teaching of the church. Sometimes that's hard for people as well and you're mocked and yeah. you're depicted as someone who's out of touch. But um, to me, the world needs heroes. And I think to me, I mean, this may be a sort of exaggeration, but we need people who are examples. And I think Joe's a fantastic example of the way he lived and now he's continuing to kind of affect. Well, that's very humble. Do you want to make, I give you the background of the, do, like uh, the di- yeah. yeah. Well, it was actually, um, Joe died in December 2011. Um, and unfortunately, at the same time at Taylor High School, there was a couple of teachers died around about the same time as well. So there was a memorial service, and if I remember correctly, it was March. Um, attended by the whole school, a lot of people, Bishop Divine was there as well. And it was, uh, I'd said, is it okay if I say a, a few words at the, at the service? And I said, of course, because the amount of support that we got as a family from the local community, the local churches, the local schools, and I'm not just talking about denominational schools, the whole, the whole community, it was incredible. So I just wanted to somehow publicly say thanks. Mm. So I was, I was preparing for what I'm going to say and I, I just, I, I couldn't think, you know, and I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll go up to Joe's room and I'll sit there and hopefully that'll give me some inspiration. And there's a few things dotted around these days and round about and I just, it, it was old school jotters and I thought, oh, he was, he was a messy handwriter. <laughs> I said, really, medicine was probably a good, <laughs> a good, a good place for him to be. But and, and just seeing his handwriting, you know, that wee connection and, you know, reading through him and I, I thought, wait a minute, this isn't schoolwork. And then the, it was like an old jotters in the backs of it, he'd started writing, he'd, he'd been writing a diary. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this. Veronica didn't know this. Angela didn't know this. Veronica's his mum, Angela's his sister. And we didn't, none of us knew this. And I started reading, you know, and it gave me a, such an insight into his thoughts and not just, we, we, we put quite a few quotes in there. But an insight into, you know, how he interrelated with all his friends and, you know, just the general life of a teen- teenager. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so glad that there's something written down and it's not just our memories. And you're, you're actually hearing it first hand from Joe. And I read through it and, you know, obviously being his dad, as I'm reading the words, I could hear him speaking them, mm-hmm. you know, and... and First of all, it was a great source of comfort, and I showed Veronica and Angela, and I said, as you imagine, we were, all, we were all in tears. But at the memorial service, when I was, you know, thanking everyone, and I just thought, I need to, I need to give some essence of Joe here. So I said, no, and I recounted, you know, I, I was looking for inspiration, I found these, the diaries. Mm-hmm. I read a couple of quotes out, and they, they were lovely. <clears throat> And it was, um, it was after that memorial service. Um, I was speaking with Jerry McCormick, head teacher at Taylor. And he said, you know, these words are important. You should think about doing something. And with this help and, and with uh, Robert the technician, we put together Joe's words. And I've got to say, you know, when we, when we first saw it, I was, I was gobsmacked. Because I, I read it and I thought, that's just, it inspires me. And I'm, you know, very, <coughs> excuse me, very close to Joe. And, and, you know, as I say, when I read the words, I can actually hear him saying it. And there's a few things in, in Joe's words as well that we actually had discussions about. Mm-hmm. So it's not just the words that he'd written down. He's obviously thought about it, had a chat with me, with his mum, with his sister. And... Is either written down before or after, or is you know developed the thought, but but that's kind of how it came about. You know, it was um, again, if you want a series of coincidences. Uh, I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah, I know it's that's I use that word, but 
yeah, I, I'm, I'm very similar. I don't, I, I think things are set in place mm -hmm. at certain times, at certain moments, for reasons. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of examples do you have of what's what's been the fallout from the from the book itself, and is there, how's the reaction been? Obviously, you've got the back here, and I noticed that um, the, the Joe Wall when I first got it. Yeah, like, that, that, that <laughs> the, no, no, the 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 website doesn't exist anymore, <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't, don't go to that website. Um, but the when we put together the diary, you know, I thought, okay, right, give it to his pals, give it to family, you know different, you know, and they'll, they'll know Joe, and, you know, some a lot of folk at Taylor High wanted a wee copy and whatnot, so it was, you know, it was that. Then, as folk got to know about it, we were getting asked, oh, do you have a copy, do you have a copy? And I thought, okay, right, better get some more printed. So again, with the, with the help of uh, Taylor High and, and Lola in particular, we, we got quite a few copies printed. <coughs> and then I got chatting to the, the folk at Caffin Grotto in the Pilgrimage Centre and I showed them the diary I said, is that you know, is something that you would um, you would want to hold because there's folk been asking for them? I said, yeah, it'd be lovely. <laughs> First thing, how much did it cost? I said, no, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of folk think, you know, something like that, you should be charging it, but no, yeah. that's not the purpose of it. Um, so that then, it was in Caffin Grotto and we had Lots of stories. There, there was one lady who regularly took a batch of 10 or 12 and on her travels she would distribute them out to folk. I know lots of folk, you know, I, I, I'll preserve folks' integrity if you don't That's mind and, and not yeah. say who they are, yeah, but you know, I, I know a lot of, I know, there, I know there's folk, there was a lady came over from America mm -hmm. just on the story of Joe, mm -hmm. just to come and meet us and just to, you know, mm -hmm. find out about us, but we're still very good friends, obviously, in, in Facebook and, and whatnot. Um, I was folk in Canada, and I know the book's in Australia, I know it's in Spain, you know, and fa actually France as well. So I know there's, there's quite a wide distribution of actually throughout the UK. And you know, that, that's not just us, that's, that's other folk that have taken it, and you just start talking to folk. There's something in it, there definitely is. Yeah. You know, you always think back to that quote I was reflecting on this book, um, that true holiness is attractive. That was John Paul II, I think. Mm -hmm. And it is. I mean, so reading, it, reading through this myself, it's authentic. Um, and that's what we need, I think, as Catholics. I think I mean, the church throws a lot of money into youth events when it's pizza and music and noise. And it's, it, to me, the true way to bring children and, and young people back to the church and, is authentic faith. I think he had that authentic faith. I think you can clearly see the fruits of that. I know, he, I know he's died, but that has gone on. It's, it's surpassed his death, this authentic faith that he had. Yeah. I mean, look at the, some of the stuff just crying out, like, after going to Mass on Sunday, I felt I've returned home, I've gone back to where I belong. There's other quotes about prayer in here, isn't there? Um, uh, what's, it, what's the one, let's see. I can't find it, but the one he's talking about prayer, he prayed fervently, and, yeah. and, to, and how, to me, it's a great blueprint. Well, you've got one up, be, up behind you, the, the ah, one yeah. that says, when I pray, I know that I'm truly loved and cherished, and that God has given me a unique personality, which I can use to work my skills and talents. True success comes when you try your best. Now, the other thing about his diary, Joe died when he was 17. But he'd only just turned 17. It was literally 17 on the Monday. Mm. And on the Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, he collapsed. Spent five days in a coma. So most of what you read in his diary is not when a 17-year-old, it's a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old. And when you see some of the stuff that he writes, you know, his, his faith just shines through. But as a person, his faith, he, he, he wore it as a badge of honour, with pride, but with huge humility. You know, he would, you, you don't, you know, he would never force anyone into a, a position. I, I know some friends who are atheists, but Joe would have a great conversation with them, and a great conversation, not in the you know not in the conflict way that sometimes these conversations happen, but <laughs> <laughs> but in the cooperative way. Oh, tell me more about it. What did you? What did, and you know that kind of thing. Yeah. But his faith just shone through. I know. Again, there's the, now a priest that he 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 gave us a, a fabulous insight into Joe when he was at an altar server and says I used to look at Joe and I used to think at mass mm. and he used to say I wish I could have that faith. Mm. I wish I could have that depth of faith. Mm. But it just it just absolutely shone through him. 
Yeah. You know, it was brilliant. But the other thing that, not just in Joe's words, but um, at the time that Joe was in, in the coma, and I just, I, I just reminded myself, because I was, I was looking, trying to look up kind of old bits and pieces just to maybe give you a wee bit better insight. But uh, one of his very close friends, um, Chris Lawler, decided to start a hashtag on Twitter, mm -hmm. hashtag pray for Joe. When Joe was in a coma, everyone felt a bit helpless. You know, but here was something, you know, maybe we can just develop something here. And it was, it was absolutely unbelievable. Um, that, that, remember this is sort of, this is 2011, so I wasn't on Twitter at the time, but that's, this hashtag forced me to go on Twitter because I was hearing all the different things that were happening. You know, first of all, oh, right, let's get it trending in the Glasgow area, get trending in Glasgow. Can we get it trending in Scotland? Yeah. Can we get it in the UK? Trend in the UK ended up it was trending worldwide, and that's I mean I, I'm not a I, my my generation's a wee bit late for social media, but you know trending worldwide. The number of folk that say to get something to trend worldwide, and there's all sorts of celebrities, you know, um, retweeting and whatnot, and there was so many folk from different countries and different areas, and it was just it was phenomenal, mm. and it was. At the time of our lowest ebb, that was so touching. Mm. But I think why that happened was all Joe's friends, colleagues, everyone that he knew, you all get the same Joe. You, know, you all get the same lovely person. And their enthusiasm for Joe was, was obviously, you know, prompting their tweets and whatever words they were using, it was connecting with folk. But that connection with folk was actually, that was Joe. Mm, yeah. He had a very, very special way of, whoever you are, whatever your circumstances, no matter your age or anything like that, whoever you are, he just had a real, real special way of connecting with you. Mm. He's still doing it. <laughs> He's still doing it through yeah, his book. It. But it's a shame I didn't meet him. In, it's a shame I didn't meet him in person. For think, think about that. You know, it'd be good to have that kind of discussion with someone on that level. But I suppose you still can. You can pray. You know, there's intercessions and things. And I know um, there's always people online who are very particular about the, what the church teaches and these things. Yeah. But obviously, the church has a process in declaring um, who is worthy of the title sainthood. Yeah. But I, I, I firmly believe that saints are all around us and they die and they move on. I think. Um, I'm convinced that this boy is in, probably in heaven, um, and I think we should be. Maybe asking even young people asking his intercession for us in the diocese, but also us in Scotland as well, because it's a great example to have the way he lived his life, and the way he writ written these things down. I also think looking at Caritas Awards. I mean, we've been in schools, and um, some, fortunately, some some of the pupils, not all of them, but some of them view it as a kind of CV booster thing, and they're not living it authentically. I think every single Caritas student, I don't know how possible it is, but you have this before. I see the blueprint because it's love for God, it's prayer, it's devotion to the Mass, it's caring for other people. And that in itself is what the Caritas Award's all about. It was founded at Pope Benedict's Mass. And you've got that great, you've got that great um, quote about um, it'll, it'll be uh, Jesus on the altar and it'll be as close as Jesus we can be on earth at the altar. And they say a rosary for conversions as well, which I think is quite a powerful thought as well. That was there that day as well. You don't know who's there. But it's amazing that, how it affected him. Yeah, well, just just talking about the the Caritas Awards, um, they were introduced in June twenty twelve. It's I'm not a, I'm I'm not particular in dates, but um, the the first award from June twenty twelve, and Joe was was um, working towards his Caritas Award. Unfortunately, when he died, he was doing all sorts of things, children's liturgy, and, and helping out in you know various groups and whatnot, and. Uh, at the memorial service that I spoke about at Taylor High, Bishop Devine was there and he, he, he advised us all at that time that um, he was putting Joe forward to posthumously receive the Caritas Award. So Veronica and Angela and I went to the ceremony <clears throat> and the first two people to receive the Caritas Award, um, both unfortunately posthumously, the 
the young lad, uh, Raymond, that died in Blantyre through a stab wound. The horrible, horrible, but, but you know, talked to his parents, and there was something that we shared in Joe. So Joe and Raymond were the first two to receive a Caritas Award. And uh, I remember saying to Bishop Devine, you know, when I collected the award, Joe would have loved this. There was just so much his faith and and so much, you know, a, a representation of his faith. And as I say, you know, you quite rightly said there, you know, there is something in it. There is something that's a bit more by giving something back, by caring for people, for looking after folk. Um, it's, it's a it's great thing. It is. I think that, that's the whole point in the Cartas Wars, to be saints of the 21st century, to answer that call. I think we've got a great example here. And I think, you know, going forward, it'll continue to inspire people. Yeah, well, it's, really it's funny you say Saints of the 21st century, because in, in Joe's uh, Requiem Mass, um, again, Bishop Devine was there, there was also Father McGuire, Father Kane, and Father Campbell, who was a previous chaplain of Taylor High. And, you know, a, you know, a beautiful young man's died. So... It, you can imagine the chapel was full. Some really fabulous memories and, and eulogies, one from my brother, one from Jenny McCormick from Taylor High, and one from Father McGuire, covering all aspects of Joe's life, but the consistent thread was his, his inner beauty, his inner care, his inner, his inner love, his faith, which was so strong. I, I can't aspire to how faithful he was. It was such an inspiration. But then, just before the commendation, Bishop Devine asked if he could say a few words, and he said, um, he said, Father McGahey, in his you know, thoughts about Joe, you know, comforted us, and you know, we, we wonder why when someone so young dies, we, we wonder why. And Bishop Devine said, well, I think I know why. Of course, he had everyone's attention at that point. And he said, um, when Boat Benedict came to Bella Houston, he challenged the young folk of Scotland. He said, in amongst you there are saints, you know, and there's saints of the 21st century in amongst you right now. Um, and you have to aspire to be saints. And Bishop Divine repeated just exactly what you said there, Joe, and I firmly believe that Joe is a saint of the 21st century. Now, it's not a, you know, St Andrew or a, you know, a name saint, yeah. but a saint is simply... Simply, it's what an achievement. You've made it to heaven. Yeah, that's you it. Know, so, and that was, that was so comforting. Mm. We buried Joe on Christmas Eve. Mm. And Aunt Mary was, was at the vigil service in the cathedral on that Christmas Eve. And she couldn't wait to tell us that Bishop Divine's homily on that Christmas Eve was all about Joe. And again, he repeated that you know, he firmly believed Joe was a saint of the 21st century. And somebody of the prominence of Bishop Divine saying that is gobsmacking. You know, it's it's although I, you know, we know Joe as the person to to hear that. And Bishop Divine never met him. Well, he, he would have met him at confirmation, but you know, along with the hundreds of other kids. But he, you know, but for Bishop Divine to form that view, because he always spoke to different folk that knew Joe. And then for him to repeat it so publicly, it was such a comfort, mm. such a comfort. And then as you, as, again, as you were talking about, um, well, sorry, it's also something that he would, he would repeat to the confirmandi when he was going down and say, and, you know, like you said, does anyone know anyone, you know, family, friends, relations that are saints and mm. whatnot? And they, they don't come, come up with the usual, you know, kind of things. But Bishop Divine, does that tell you about a saint? But he, he actually used Joe and Raymond, you know, the two lads uh, that had died, and he said, so, you know, there's folk amongst you. And I actually remember there was a, a outdoor mass at Caffin Grotto in September 2012 when Bishop Devine was, the, was there, and he, you know, he was repeating exactly the same thing, and I, it, was, it was so lovely because he was standing outside the glass chapel and he was repeating this, I'll tell you about a saint, there's a lad that used to live just over there. You know? That's it. That's that's the spirit of it, you know. Yeah. I was saying, you know, people always question, oh, how can we be a good God, a just God, when it does so much bad things and allows so much bad things to happen to people? 
But yeah, when you look at this blackest and horriblest of situations, you can see how from this example, something good has come from this. It's helped so many people. Um, and if you look at the, the words, even his present words about death, you can see that he believed that death was not the end. For, one of me, for me, one of the most moving words of the funeral mass is life for your servants, Lord. Life has changed, not ended. And that's what it has. It's changed for Joe. It's not changed for us yet, but it will come to us. It's interesting what you were saying, you know, about death and how it can affect us all and, and, and whatnot. And as, as Joe's dad, and I know Veronica is Joe's mum and Angela is his, his sister, you know, it's, it's a, a most horrible thing. You know, it's... Every day I, I miss Joe. And I know Veronica and Angela are the same, but... What helps you over that is, is... is... a strong faith and a knowledge that, you know, when, when, as you say, when you read that, you know, Joe's thoughts about death, well, well, no, it's a new beginning, it's something else, it's not, you know, I'm not just gone. And, well, personally that's been proved because I, I pray to Joe now uh, and for intercessions, they, and his, I usually answer immediately, I don't know if he's just doing his dad a favour, but, <laughs> but I get to, uh, I, I get, I get response pretty quickly. And it's, it's wee things like, um, you know, if Angela's out and Veronica's worrying for this and she hasn't texted me, she'll say a wee prayer to Joe and literally, within 10 seconds, the text appears. So there's wee things like that. And there's other personal things which I, I, mean, you know, I wouldn't go into detail, but you know, big things that have happened in my life and I'm struggling with and I say, Joe, can you help me? Help me. Yeah. And you know, it's like immediately your mind clears and crikey, there's what to do. Or something happens and you go, right, get it. I know what, what I should be doing there. So there's that. And, and Joe's strong faith really helps me. And it... When uh, such an awful tragedy like this happens, you, you can go different ways. Mm. A lot of folk go down and depressed and, and phew, cry, I could be there. Mm. <laughs> it's a, a very easy path to, to tread and or, or I'd really pray for everyone in that situation. <clears throat> but I took the inspiration from Joe. Mm -hmm. And not long before Joe's death, he had a conversation with me and his mum. And he said, you know, I've been thinking about what I'm going to do with my life. And, you know, I know I've applied for medicine. And he'd, he'd got the grade, well, I knew he'd got the grades at that point. But, you know, I've got this overwhelming sense of, I want, to, I would really like to help folks spiritually. Mm. And I, I personally think he's been granted his wish. Mm -hmm. I cannot think of anything that Joe would want to do more in God's work. Oh, it's funny, interesting enough, and people might think I'm exaggerating here, um, but I see a, a sort of similarity to St. Dresel as you. And uh, people might think, well, she's a doctor of the church, she's a great saint, but in her life, um, St. Tres was hidden away in the Carmelite convent. She was an intelligent girl, and she came from a very devout family, but it was only after her death, I think the quote was, um, after my death, I'll let drop a shower of roses, or I'll do more work after. Um, after our death, and it seems like this is the case here. And obviously, there's a kind of link with Carfen and Karen Taylor and St. Tres, and to me, this is like, it's almost like the story of a soul for a, a Scottish teenager. And they call it, you call it, you call it Joe's words, but I, I think it's something that Joe's way might be more appropriate, because you've got St. Tres's little way, who's doing things simply. Joe's way, to me, seems like simplicity, humility, prayer. And that, that's just my reflection on it. People might want to disagree with that and think I'm exaggerating. You know, it's, as you say, it's quite a short booklet, but for you to get that from it, you, you've captured Joe's essence. Because it's 12, 12, it is 12 pages, but in that, you've managed to distill everything about what it, this person was, you know, your son was. So, um, thanks for coming in. No Appreciate it. Do you want to do the... Yeah, I, want to, um, I wanted to end on this kind of quote, um, because... As I say, thing, bad, bad things happen. We're all going to die. What's, what's the date of that quote? That was the 3rd of December 2011. Right. Joe went in, Joe collapsed and went into the court. It was an undiagnosed heart condition because folk sometimes mm. ask what it is. It was a condition called Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. Um, but if that was the 3rd of December, Joe's birthday was the 12th of December. He collapsed on the early morning of the 15th of December. So this is, what, 12 days before he collapsed? So it's 12 days before he collapsed and it's very prescient words and very 
good words to end even in the book and end this interview as well. So he, he wrote, um, I know that the world ain't going to be perfect and that's why I love having faith. Just think of all the people who were starving in wars, famines, were excluded, were tortured, were not loved in the world. All these people who were unfortunate on earth are, I'm certain, sitting on the highest thrones of heaven. How reassuring is that? How reassuring is that? Indeed. So thank you for joining us today on this church chat. It's something I personally wanted to do um, the last two weeks after finding out that the, 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 the climbing Ben Nevis in memory of Joe. Um, if you want any more information about the diary or indeed want to have the diary, please contact um, us and we will in turn contact Alan and uh, hopefully that can be arranged. So thank you very much for joining us and thank you once again for joining no us problems. here. No problems, a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks very much.